What's up, Crypto Junkies? It's Jay. Welcome to a new segment. Let me look you in the eyes. See, I'm looking at the viewer. How long has it been since we did a new segment on crypto news? It's been f***ing ages, hasn't it? Okay, so let's dive right into it. I've got quite a bit pulled up. There's so much going on in the crypto space now daily. I want to cover the stuff that I don't really see people talking about. I want to cover everything. We're going to talk about just the adoption of blockchain technology all the way to some big news on Trance, big news on Ripple, the Verge hack. We'll talk about all that. So let's just dive right into it. And uh, let's see how fast we can get through this with it still being comprehensive. Let's let's go. I like this challenge. All right. So on the screen, you see it. Let's start at the very beginning. Bank of America is adding to its growing list of blockchain patents. It has a lot so far. How many? Does this article actually mention how many? Previously existing 15. There's 20 new. So they drew up an additional 20 new cryptocurrency and blockchain patents. So they now have 35 blockchain patents patents, which is very, very interesting. So that's just another example of the one side of it where they are banks, the government 100% supporting blockchain technology. On the other side, we get the mainstream media, which is like what you see on the screen. The Federal Reserve put out a report. First off, why would you trust the Federal Reserve? It's basically a bank. That would be no different. It's the United States largest bank. Okay, The Federal Reserve is not owned by the government. The Federal Reserve does not give a about you and the Federal Reserve's job is not the public is not for the people okay it was drafted up in 1913 go research the Federal Reserve just drop that bread come for you for those who want to fall down the rabbit hole a little bit they put a hypothetical value of $1,800 on Bitcoin gee thanks guys thanks so much bud I, I didn't ask for that actually nobody should give a what the Federal Reserve thinks the value of Bitcoin should be. Of course, it's going to put it right around the gold value. Gosh, let's use a little bit of logic here for a second. First off, it's in their best interest to classify it right around gold. So everybody else says, oh, yeah, you're, you're right. Let's just do that. If this has impacted the, the price of Bitcoin over the last 24 hours, I'm going to be seriously pissed off. Guys, I don't know how to say this nicely. The Fed is bull. They are going to try and put this into the same class as gold for their best interest. The dollar is no longer backed by gold. That was chopped off and ended in the 70s. The Federal Reserve no longer gets audited. So there are trillions of dollars that just get printed and there's no accountability for it. Blockchain technology and what we're all fighting for is the exact opposite of that. Don't let this affect your opinion. If you do, I'm sorry, but you're an idiot. Okay, and you probably should not be in the cryptocurrency space. It's just the nicest way I can put that. This triggers me, as you can see, because all this is garbage. It's utter garbage. What they're going to say in it means nothing. Next, Zimbabwe's largest crypto exchange, Golix, is attempting to sue the central bank. I like it. Over trading ban. So here's what we all have to realize. It's simply because of conditioning, and now it's just widely accepted belief, but the central banks in any country do not dictate anything. But because we've allowed them to dictate price and inflation and interest rates, they do. So here's another prime example of the people trying to stand up against central banks. Like I said, central banks do not dictate value, price, cost, inflation, but we allow them to, so they do it, all right? Zimbabwe's largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange is going to challenge that. They're going to say, hey, wait a second, actually, uh, no. <laughs> And I like that a lot. So we'll see what happens over this. But the trading bans in uh, countries outside the U.S., this has all been happening over this last six months. If you've been on this journey with us since, say, October, maybe even before then, throughout the Middle East, throughout Asia, trading bans, going to court, new regulation, new three-letter agencies, and support towards, hey, how do we regulate this, has been happening, okay? Okay, next, let's talk some more good news. We got Ashton Kutcher with Guy Osiri. Guy Osiri, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, they own a fund, a startup fund, and they have uh, been investing into Ripple. And so they surprised Ellen DeGeneres today, a very inspirational little piece. And they donated 4 million Ripple to Ellen DeGeneres' wildlife fund. She's about to go to, I think it's South Africa. And she's taking the next steps to once again help and give back, which I think is great. I believe that once you get to a certain level of richness or wealthy, uh, you start to give back. Some people do it sooner than others, but it's kind of one of those things that just 
automatically happen. Nice little inspo piece. Once again, gets crypto mainstream on a TV show with moms and middle-aged women who really don't know what's going on with cryptocurrency would be my safe assumption. But they've got a lot of what? Time on their hands because they're stay-at-home mom. They're, they're doing their thing with the kiddos. And so this is great. This gets them, hmm, what's Ripple? Gets them Googling around, gets them trying to figure out what just happened <laughs> and of course like unless you're living under a rock the process that they did they just pushed a button to send the money people like that people like easy if you can make it easy enough usually outweighs the fear that people have with adoption right so mass adoption on technology happens when the excitement barrier and the plus side barrier outweighs and dwarfs engulfs the uh, negative side or the fear side of it right so another opportunity for that to happen you know, a lot of these people in the audience, they love Ashton Kutcher, they love Ellen DeGeneres, so they're seeing them use the technology. There's so many different subliminal things happening in just a segment and a TV show like this. It's, it's big. Then it gets shared around on social media. Right now, it's got 250,000 views, 1,200 retweets, and 7,000 likes. This will drum up some action, some crypto action. So still hasn't affected the price. That happened, that dropped yesterday. It's the 24th. So we've been on this for about 12 hours. It kind of affected Ripple. Yeah, these are 15 minute candles. Maybe somewhere around here that might have started. But then you see we're still retracing down on Ripple. But it's good news. It's really good news. Now let's talk about Google trying to hire Vitalik Buterin. Buterin? 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 I can never pronounce his name. If you're in a Discord, you guys know that. For some sort of top secret crypto project. Yeah, at first people thought this was kind of like BS. He was just making this up but apparently it's real. I really don't see Vitalik doing something like that. He's pretty glued to the uh, Ethereum project, but um, just interesting, interesting piece of news. So let's talk about Coinbase acquiring Paradex, which I hadn't heard of before, but it's an international exchange. So the reason why Coinbase would make a move like this is because Coinbase owns GDAX, right? But they're very slow to release pairs because they're based out of San Francisco. So the cryptos that they release and list have to be passed through some sort of approval process. I'm sure the SEC, the FCC has to look at it. They want to also tackle more market and dominate. So what they've done, that well, they've bought and they want to launch Paradex's exchange to international so that they can trade hundreds of tokens at the same time and sweep up more of the market share. I see this as a relatively bad thing, even though I think most people would just look at it and be like, oh, okay, whatever. The whole point is decentralized cryptocurrency, right? We're gonna have to keep our eye on Coinbase because collectively they're acquiring a lot in the background. They are very much acting like a Facebook or a Google. And while there's a lot of people that, are, that would say, hey, this is a good thing overall for cryptocurrency, it's not necessarily at all. The more that Coinbase starts to you know, wrap its greedy little fingers around more and more pieces of the market, they will have more say in dictation the overall space, okay? So not necessarily a good thing. Jumping back to some good news. Apparently there's a Tron and Alibaba partnership happening, which the CEO, Justin Sun of Tron was supposedly mentored under Jack Ma, but this was in high debate and has been in high debate since the get-go. They keep talking about each other. So I, I don't know. I think at this point, you just need to kind of chill out with the conspiracy theories and accept the fact that Jack Ma, or Jack Ma, however you want to pronounce his name, did in fact at some point mentor Justin Sun and it looks like that relationship is going to move forward, which is good news because there's a lot of people that are Tron long-term holders and want something to happen with that project and it is a top coin. It was just ranked very well um, in China's ranking. It's a top 10 coin on coin market cap. It is a top coin. That cannot be denied. Next, I wanted to touch on a little bit of sovereignty and we're going to wrap up with a consensus post-show wrap-up, okay? I wanted to touch on this really quick. This is actually an article article from back in January of 2018, but it's a topic that is getting more and more steam, okay? Obviously, the Fed's valuation of what Bitcoin is worth does not really mean shit. It's not going to go down to $1,800. It's not worth $1,800. Let's talk about how do you get your Bitcoin out. I shot a video talking about hyperinflation. Uh, I think I called it eyes wide open. That is going to trigger and poke a lot of people's beliefs. A lot of people are going to get butt sore over me talking about those things. But in a, I like to play around with all scenarios, assuming that one will eventually happen. And one of those scenarios is that in hyperinflation, obviously people run the crypto and then the exchanges start to tighten up and then what do you do with your crypto? How do you get it back out? Well, you would be looking to move your crypto and your insane amount of gains that you would incur without taxes or low taxes, low fees, whatever you wanna call it, low taxation. The way to do that is gold and silver. Now, I'm not 100% 
sure how that would work in the United States, but in the UK, in a lot of parts of Europe, because of how the asset class of gold and silver itself, you can get out tax-free-ish. And that is huge. I don't know why more people aren't talking about that, but that is a big play. I can almost guarantee that it is a better play than the 35 to 40% taxation that you face if you just move it back out of an exit exchange, especially for my US residents and US citizens. So this is something you might wanna look into, but gold and silver has a how-to guide on how to do it on their website. But for those of you who are in the opportunity for Mint Builder with us, you can do the same there. And there's a lot of people in the UK right now moving out their crypto $10,000 a day, $10,000 a week into gold and silver because that you can just take and cash out in a store once it's converted from crypto into the other asset class, which is uh, precious metal. It's yours, scot-free, zero tax. That's sexy. I like that. So that's another little trick, a little hack for you in case you didn't know. Now let's talk about consensus. Blockchain week that just finished up last week and we had a huge surge in attendance, okay? So last year it was estimated that there was 2,000 people and it was right around the value valuation of Bitcoin being about $2,000 this year, estimated 9,000 people. The ad space alone, ads everywhere, okay? They really, optimization of space this year was insane. I've seen pictures, I've seen videos, a lot of post wrap up videos from other YouTubers covering it. It was amazing, it was amazing to see. Some differences this year, okay? So first off, it's estimated anywhere between 50 million to $100 million in gross revenue from consensus, that's big. Now, next, where was the focus? Whereas last year, everyone was kind of huddled around the Bitcoin and Ethereum booths and tents and, co and topics and conversation. This year, there was way more people looking at everything, looking at all these other projects, which I think is a great thing moving forward because it just shows that the market itself, the sophistication level is going up. So it's no longer just like, let's hoard onto these top two. Let's really look at the wide application of blockchain technology, decentralized ledgers in the overall space and how that's gonna affect the whole world. And that's great to see it kind of go from this to this this year, what do we have to look forward to next year? I mean, it's gonna be insane what next year will look like if we were to extrapolate the overall attendance and the overall size, the overall money made, it should be even crazier next year. I just wanted to mention that because I think overall this is a really positive thing. There's a lot of amazing projects going on. I can't possibly bring those all to you. Can't bring them all to the community. There's a lot of other channels that do and there is some overlap, but overall you should have your feelers out looking around for unique ways that people are applying blockchain technology, decentralized ledging, decentralized overall exchanges a store of value for different things that we have and how it's re-energizing kind of old areas and stagnant markets okay it reminds me of when we thought the uh, the study of the eyeballs was completely capped and that we had studied and learned everything that we needed to know what is that uh, ocul oculates let me just google it really quick hold on okay optometry so ophthalmology ophthalmologist Gosh, is that right? There was a point where they thought that they had completely studied everything in ophthalmology and then they realized that they hadn't and they reopened the field. They actually closed, it was the only scientific field in history that they closed down and reopened. Fun little fact, okay? I don't know how or why that just hit me like that, but anyways, I think that uh, blockchain and decentralization is really starting, just that thought is starting to take over and spread like wildfire and I'm really, fascinated to see where that's going to go and take us. That's all I got for you today. I hope that you walk away from this a little bit more uh, educated. You got some knowledge. You got some little sound bites and drops for your friends in your uh, circle of influence today. And uh, be on the lookout because we'll be dropping more videos on the channel very soon, my friends. See ya. What's up, junkies? You'll notice that some time has passed. This is different in the background. And we didn't talk about Verge in the video. The reason why is because I found a couple really, really great articles talking about the fundamental issue at hand, and I wanted to shoot a solo video for that, so be on the lookout. It'll get dropped on not the Crypto J channel, but the Crypto Junkies channel, most likely, because I got two uploads hitting today, and I don't want to take away from one or the other, so news segment will hit on Crypto J. Crypto Junkies will have the Verge story dropping and all the details about the hack. If you like what we're doing on the channel, take a second, hit the subscribe button, click the bell notification. This just in. Crypto Junkies is now over a thousand people. Over 2,500 people. have over 3,000 people. 4,600 have crossed over 5,000 people in our Discord chat community.